Ooh, if you click on this video, oh girl, I'm about to make y'all mad. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's a girl. Hey, hey, it's a girl. Ginger, of course, welcome back. Today I'm here with some bad news. If you did not know, hair growth oils simply do not work. And I know how you girls like to tussle. So I'm here with some science-based evidence that hair growth oil honestly just doesn't work. This one's a big one for us. It's hard for us to accept. We seem to be so attached to hair growth oil and hair growth recipes. It's a crime. But today I'm here with not just my opinion and my feelings because that's the number one thing that I know someone is tapping right now. Well, I use castor oil for five years and my hair grew like crazy. Or I use so-and-so oil for a couple of months and my hair grew like crazy. If you had found the recipe to hair growth in an oil, don't you think all of us would have had long hair by now? So, I'm not here with my feelings and thoughts. I'm here with scientific-based evidence that most hair growth oil just don't work. They're just trying to get your money, girl. And we fall victim to this crime over and over and over and over because we want a quick fix recipe we want to grow our hair overnight we want extreme hair growth we want hair that never stops growing in a bottle and it doesn't exist okay so without further ado let's get into this video So the first video that I'm bringing to you today is by Dr. Dre. She is a dermatologist and I actually get a lot of my skincare knowledge from her. She posted a video not too long ago. In this video, she discussed the best oils for hair growth. So let's take a look. Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about oils for hair growth. I get questions all the time. What are the best oils for growing hair? I'm gonna cover the science behind different types of oils for hair growth. Hair loss is a very distressing thing to go through. Probably the most common type of hair loss that many of you out there are dealing with is something called androgenetic alopecia. It can happen in men and women. It's due to your genetics. And for whatever reason, the hair follicle is very sensitive to androgens. And as a result, it miniaturizes and turns into a little baby vellus hair. And that is what leads to balding, thinning of the hair and decreased hair density. The over-the-counter medication for this disease process is called minoxidil. Unfortunately, it's very drying and irritating, but it doesn't actually stop the hair loss process and you have to keep using it indefinitely in order to see results. A lot of people don't like using it. And then of course, in office, there are prescription medications, spironolactone in women, which is a diuretic, and um, finasteride for men that address the hormonal component. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking all about oils. Is there any science behind using oil to grow your hair? Truthfully, the research to support the use of any oil is incredibly limited and more studies are needed. But let's start with pumpkin seed oil. Pumpkin seed oil is rich in beta carotene as well as essential fatty acids. And there actually is a randomized double blind placebo control trial of men with pattern hair loss, androgenetic alopecia. They randomized the men to get either pumpkin seed oil or placebo. And they took uh, two 100 milligram capsules, 400 milligrams daily. And at the end of the study, which was 24 weeks, the mean hair counts increased in the pumpkin seed oil group by 40%, as opposed to the placebo group only showed an increase by of 10% in hair counts. So that's a pretty significant difference. It was well tolerated overall. So while more research is needed, you know, it begins to beg the question, well, could this be an alternative to say finasteride or to uh, spironolactone and women, or could it be an alternative to using topical minoxidil, which is very irritating? You know, maybe it's easier for you to take pumpkin seed oil ta uh, capsules than it is to apply minoxidil. All right, rosemary oil. I think I did a short on this a long time ago, and it has a variety of compounds in it that are antibacterial, antiviral, anti-inflammatory. And you know, whenever there's inflammation in the scalp, this drives more oiliness and that oil can kind of harbor more bacteria and that little yeast can over proliferate and that actually can generate more inflammation that tips the hair loss process over to more hair, hair loss. 
Uh, there was a single blind randomized control trial that looked at rosemary oil versus 2% minoxidil. Study participants applied one ml of either one, whatever they were randomized to, twice a day for six months. At the end of the study, the rosemary oil group got just as good a results as the minoxidil group but they were more likely to stick with the rosemary oil because it was not drying or irritating. They didn't report side effects. Overall, they, they were a lot happier basically in the rosemary group. So we really need more studies looking at rosemary oil for hair growth because nobody really likes to deal with doing minoxidil indefinitely. Now I will point out that the rosemary oil in this, it's not like they just went to the health food store and got some rosemary essential oil and put it on there. You gotta be careful, that could cause a lot of irritation. Essential oils, they are not good to just put directly on the skin. They went with a specific pharmaceutical company, Barrage Essence Pharmaceutical Company. So now I've Iranian pharmaceutical company. So they have a rosemary oil preparation. Specifically, it had 3.7 milligrams of 1,8 cineol per mil. What the heck does that mean? Well, that's a monoterpene, otherwise known as eucalyptol. It's part of rosemary oil, and it's thought to be one of the active components. So, you know, I wouldn't, A, I wouldn't go out and just buy an essential oil and start dabbing it on your scalp. That could cause a lot of irritation for you, cause a contact dermatitis that's gonna worsen hair loss. Um, and B, be very careful, you know, anytime somebody hears a slight promise of something like a natural ingredient, well, then they're gonna, you know, snake oil you. And you don't know if what you're getting is a good quality product. Does it actually have the active component in it? See, that's important to point out, the fact that they're using pharmaceutical grade of these oils, and also pumpkin seed was ingested orally. So it wasn't just popped under scalp and miracle growth happened. It was something that happened from within. And rosemary oil is one of those oils that I hear all the time that is at least the only one that's close to giving similar results to minoxidil and also show some sign of hair growth. So rosemary oil is the only one that I've seen and I've watched a lot of videos. Other than that, they really don't have any scientific proof that oils in general are helpful when it comes to hair growth. But let's keep watching. What about tea tree oil for hair growth? It's got antibacterial properties, antifungal properties, antiviral properties. I mean, there's actually some promising research on tea tree oil for like acne, different fungal conditions, but unfortunately tea tree oil can be very irritating. It's not a pure substance, it can degrade. But what about for hair loss as I blab on? Now, there was a study where they took a micro emulsion of tea tree oil plus minoxidil plus diclofenac, which is an anti-inflammatory. They looked at that versus minoxidil alone versus vehicle control. And they showed that the tea tree oil, diclofenac, minoxidil, mambo combo was a lot more effective than just minoxidil at improving hair growth, hair density. But um, what's interesting is that the group that got the tea tree oil, they reported a decrease in oiliness very early on and that may be associated with the diclofenac or it may be associated with the tea tree oil. See, it's really hard in this study because they don't, they, you know, in, in, diclofenac is anti-inflammatory, so you can, you can point to diclofenac in this more so than the tea tree oil. It's really hard to know what is doing what or if you need the combination of them. So long story short, we need more research on tea tree oil, and I'm not, I don't know that if you went out and got some kind of tea tree oil topical, it would necessarily help with hair growth, but it does have the antibacterial properties to it, so there's that. But it's not without harm, tea tree oil, again, it's not a pure substance. Uh, as it's exposed to light and air, it oxidizes and degrades into compounds that are, it can be very irritating to the skin. And it's not something you can, tea tree oil is not a reproducible substance either. It's gonna vary in terms of its relative constituents from preparation to preparation. So that is another challenge whenever we're talking about essential oils, whether it be in skincare or you know hair care. Black castor oil is a really popular one. I've got videos on it. it. It doesn't actually grow the hair. It's very viscous and it can just improve the appearance of the hair by making it appear thicker. We don't have any research to show that it actually changes the hair cycle or actually causes true hair growth, but it is very moisturizing and is a popular you know ingredient to incorporate in hair care products that help reduce breakage. 
Now, another oil that hasn't been shown to grow hair, but is helpful in the hair, I've got videos on it, is coconut oil. Coconut oil, because of the, the way, the size of coconut oil, it actually can enter into the hair shaft. So basically she just said that castor oil, there's no scientific evidence that black castor oil can grow your hair, nor does coconut oil. Listen, I'm gonna put this video down in the description box for you to continue watching if you want to. I do want to go and watch another video that she posted entirely on castor oil for hair growth and I think where I get the most questions from you all is with regards to using castor oil for hair growth whether it be hair on your head or eyebrow growth eyelash growth or in your beard area um, many of you have asked me about and castor oil here's the thing about it it's 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 been reported all over the internet to lead to increased hair growth but that has not been substantiated whatsoever in the scientific literature. And whenever I say that, I think, you know, people might get a little offended that I say that, uh, but I'm just telling you that like, I can't tell you, oh yeah, castor oil for hair growth, totally two thumbs up, because there's just no evidence for it. I'm not dismissing you if you have observed that, but just know there's, there's nothing in the medical literature to support the use of castor oil for hair growth. Otherwise, we, in dermatology, we would be handing it out like lollipops in a bank. Uh, because people, when they lose their hair, the emotional impact that has is tremendous. And in dermatology, we want every, to do everything possible to alleviate that suffering. So if it worked, if we had evidence that it worked, we would be using it too. But we don't. Uh, castor oil, I think some of the benefits that people observe with castor oil are related to its viscosity. It is a very vi a viscous, sticky, thick oil. And as a result, it deposits on the shaft of the hair, whether that be on the hair on your head or your eyebrows or your eyelashes, and may, it coats them and makes them appear thicker than they actually are. So I'll put that video in the description box as well so you can finish watching it if you want. But in my experience, I feel like it's the same thing when it comes to castor oil, it's very thick. And I remember when I first started my hair journey, Everybody was using castor oil to grow their hair, so I started using castor oil as well. And I did not get significant extreme hair growth from it, but I would say that my hair did feel thicker because it was coated with oils. And my hair was coated with oils for like 10 plus years, y'all. So again, no scientific evidence that castor oil is the holy truth when it comes to hair growth. But I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, who the hell is this white lady talking about hair growth? What the hell does she know? I know what you're thinking because I thought the same thing. I kept digging a little further and found this video. Black dermatologist talking about hair growth and how to grow your edges. Hey guys, it's Shion Okimi and welcome back to my channel. First of all, shout out to Shion. I love her channel, love her content. And this video right there, top notch. So I'm really, really excited to introduce the two dermatologists that I have on here on call with me. The first is Dr. Candris Heath. I am a Philadelphia-based dermatologist who specializes in care for adults and pediatric patients. And the second is another highly renowned black dermatologist, Dr. Hope Mitchell. I am a board-certified dermatologist who practices medical aesthetic and surgical dermatology in Ohio. And today we'll be talking all about growing your edges back. The thing that we'll talk about in this video will be about lost edges that resulted from things that you did from the outside so like tight hairstyles things like that and we're not really going to talk about if you have an internal problem and that's causing your hair loss because if that's the case you probably you would need to go to a doctor it's like there's no way I can tell you what health condition that you're having. There can be like actual serious health conditions that are causing you to lose your hair. And then you can also just be deficient in certain things like zinc and vitamin D are really common deficiencies that can cause people to lose their hair. And that's important to note as well. Um, a lot of us are so deficient in vitamins. We're not eating right. We're not eating quality foods. We're not drinking water. <laughs> so of course there's a lot of issues that we may have internally that is affecting our hair growth but what we're so set on finding is the external thing that's going to help us grow hair meanwhile hair growth is happening from within so if you're not right within then you're not gonna be right on the outside. You're gonna have a lot of skin issues, hair issues, your nails are not gonna grow and all of those are indications that something is wrong on the inside. Now let's keep watching. 
when people are thinking about their edges, really, they can start today by the reversal of doing things that can be traumatic, whether it's glued down hairstyles that when they're removed, they're also removing um, hair and they're also traumatizing the follicles, limiting tight hairstyles. If it hurts, it's too tight. Yes. If you're, if you cannot move your eyebrows after it's in, it is too tight. And our body tells us, you know, pain, throbbing, little bumps around the areas where the hairs are being pulled. It's not acceptable to say, I'll just go home and take Tylenol and sleep it off. That is a warning sign. <laughs> it's like alert. Hello. This is not cool. Those hairs, they come back finer and lighter and thinner. They're not robust hairs that can really stand on their own. They need time to mature and to grow. And if you go back to those hairstyling practices while we're trying to grow the hair, you're just going to rip those new hairs out. And I often let them know that some of these practices that have led them to this point really started in childhood. Often, you know, these things started well beyond we even knew about edges. Those things were being done to our hair. And you, because we've been kind of conditioned to not express that. But I want people to know that, yes, that is, that's the first step. Instead of purchasing an oil or this or whatever you see, really limiting the, the tightness on the scalp. I did a video not too long ago about entirely stop doing protective styles on your hair because they are ripping your hair out. And so many people came for me. But at the end of the day, a lot of the damage that's happening to our scalp and hair are coming from protective styles. Let's face it. So many of us have a story about what happened to our hair, our edges, bald spot, etc. after putting in a protective style. We call them protective, but half of the time they're really not that protective, especially if it comes at a risk of potentially ripping out your edges or your hair. I put on a protective style once and had a whole bald spot, y'all. A whole bald spot right in the front of my head and my edges were basically gone from one style. So a lot of the time we're ripping our hair out and yet what we want instead of stopping these practices is to find an oil or something that's going to grow our edges back versus let me stop ripping my edges out. People think, okay, I'm going to get a treatment and this is going to be fixed. This is one of those conditions where you actually have to do both preventative and treatment to really save the follicles that you have. Okay, so once they've done the preventative part, what can they do as far as treating what they've already lost? With traction alopecia, I guess we should say the name, right? Yes. Because that's what thinning edges is. It's a medical condition called traction alopecia. And this type of hair loss is very interesting. In the beginning, the damage that is done from tight hairstyling, et cetera, if those styles are loosened, you can actually begin to regrow your hair. The minute you see it and you stop pulling and brushing and, and using those styles that are pulling on the edges, absolutely. And everyone's going to be different. There are some people who naturally started out with finer hair to begin with. You know, they didn't have thick, robust hair. And so they may not be the ones that would be likely to stimulate hair and come back as quickly as maybe someone who genetically has more robust hair. And one of the big takeaways from a study that's been done looking at people who had traction alopecia, what they found was that on relaxed hair, so if people get braids on top of relaxed hair, they were at higher risk than if someone had natural hair and then got braids. So definitely first thing is to loosen the hairstyles, maybe change some, some hair habits. If the practices do continue, then we see the other phase of the hair loss where we're seeing more scarring coming into play. We know that just applying a specific oil is not, it, it is not going to just bring all of your hair back, especially if the follicles are already scarred. But with that said, there have, have been studies that show that there are some ingredients and, and things and, and oils that can help with hair growth. One ingredient um, the research has shown to be somewhat effective, but not as effective as medical treatments would be. There is, oil. there is a study that shows there can be some efficacy, maybe as close to as a 2% minoxidil. Um, so I tend to recommend, um, you know, that as an ingredient to look for in products because I get that question all the time, you know, what oil, which oil? And I think it's just a matter of, you know, using it, being consistent, massaging the scalp, perhaps being able to bring that blood flow to the scalp. I believe in massage. I believe in stimulating the scalp. 
um, definitely to bring blood flow, um, to increase oxygen and nutrients to the follicle. I think that it can be helpful. And there are things that we can do from an internal standpoint to help promote you know, hair growth as well. If you go into the store, there are lots of vitamins that say hair and nail vitamins. And one of the things that they have in common is that they have lots of biotin in them. There's really only one true hair loss condition that is diagnosed as a baby where you have actually problems processing biotin. And that is a very small percentage of the population. It's actually very rare that actually needs to definitely supplement with biotin beyond what you would normally get in a, in a healthy diet. So all that to say, when you are looking for something kind of a, a supplement, you do not need a supplement that has a million times more biotin than you, than you really need. Not only does the science not support the use of biotin for hair growth, but also the vitamin industry is not regulated like drugs. So it's unregulated, but if we get down to the science of it, biotin, that's not it. Wow. That's not okay. it to bring those follicles back. But Dr. Hope can tell you about some things, you know, for your diet and things like that, that can help. You know, we do have some things that are great. We have definitely found that saw palmetto, we know that there's a hormone that it blocks, you know, from causing us to lose our, our hair. But we know that supplements that contain that can be beneficial. I like to go the route of antioxidants, really to decrease inflammation. The more inflammation we have in our system, the more likely we're to suffer with something, be it hair loss, be it arthritis, etc. And inflammation in the bloodstream can be anything. It could be our diet, eating lots of processed food, stress. It could be just having a medical condition. Okay. Right, like diabetes that's not controlled, you know, loss of a loved one, emotional loss. So there's a lot that we face on a day-to-day -day basis that can really make us more inflammatory. And so really incorporating antioxidants, fruits and vegetables. Um, I like to recommend ingredients such as maca root, curcumin, um, ashwagandha. I usually keep it pretty, you know, light with patients, but I think addressing from an internal standpoint is always important when we want to really support the hair growth. We can have more robust growth if internally we seem to be balanced as well. All right, so I'll also put the full video down below, like I said, but <laughs> y'all, the maybe potentially pharmaceutical grade rosemary oil may perhaps not really grow your hair does not make me feel confident to bathe in rosemary oil for hair growth i think we don't put enough emphasis on health we don't put enough emphasis on what we're putting in our bodies such as nutrition the way we eat what we eat are we drinking water i recently started a detox <laughs> where i gave up sugar dairy gluten alcohol and I think there was another one and carbs for two weeks and I ended up enjoying it so much that I did it for three weeks I eat carbs now but I still stay away from sugar dairy gluten and alcohol and it's been a month and I feel amazing my skin looks amazing as you guys can probably tell okay I have absolutely no new breakouts but that goes to tell you how important nutrition is when it comes to our skin our health our hair and Focusing so much on growth oils, you are losing and you are wasting a ton of money. Especially when it comes to buying these hair vitamins, a lot of them are basically biotin and biotin is literally proven to not grow hair. Not only was it mentioned in this video, but there's another video that I watch, I will also link it down below, where biotin is just not it. And on top of that, with biotin, there's a risk that it will affect your blood test. So if you go get your blood test done, it will affect your levels. So you won't be able to get a proper diagnosis from your blood test because you're over here pumping biotin into your system. Free yourself from the shackles of hair growth oils. They don't work. Most of the concoction out there are just people whipping things up in their kitchen anyway. So it's not pharmaceutical grade. It's not proven to work. You are clogging your follicles, causing more inflammation, which is actually causing more hair loss than hair growth. And I know, I know someone's going to leave a comment talking about how whatever oil grew their hair. But think about it. Was it the oil or was your hair going to grow back anyway? When I had my bald spot and my traction alopecia from 
my protective style, I started using hair growth oil as well, but I was very inconsistent with it. And then it got to a point where I was like, you know what? I don't actually think this is doing anything. Okay. I'm massaging my scalp. Massaging probably had more to do with my hair growing back versus the oils that I was using. And on top of that, it's all about patience. Give your scalp and your hair a break. All year, I want to say since June, I literally stopped doing my baby hairs. I stopped swooping, whooping, and doing all of that stuff with them. I've been doing wash and goes for the large part of this year, actually. So I haven't been putting a lot of attention on my scalp. And I can tell you, I see such a huge difference with my edges coming back. And no, I'm not using anything on them. So a lot of the time, it's not actually the oil. Your hair was going to grow back anyway. You just happen to be using something on your scalp and you swear by it and you tell everybody and they go and buy the same thing and guess what they don't even get the same results you are better off looking at your nutrition and being honest with yourself what are you eating are you exercising are you actually taking care of yourself because if you are unhealthy you can't expect hair growth <laughs> damn <laughs> i'm gonna make some of y'all mad today all right well thank you so much for watching this video let me know your thoughts down below when it comes to hair growth oil there are so many videos and recipes out there that it's really hard for someone that is just starting their hair journey because that's the information that's out there and we need to create better content to kind of weed off the misinformation when it comes to hair care just people are having a field day posting their experience when it comes to natural hair as if natural hair is something that is so personalized you know what works for you doesn't work for me but there's still a basic level of hair care and there's a basic level of what works across all of us when it comes to for example hair growth and when it comes to putting things on our scalp some of these things just simply don't work thank you so much for watching let me know your thoughts down below are you using growth oils are they working or is it just all in your mind? Be honest and let me know down below. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.